Welcome back to the channel. This is Sarah and this is my weekly wrap up. We can review. We'll see how this goes. Uh, so from last Wednesday to this Wednesday, <laughs> it's been a, uh, I didn't do well this week. Um, mostly that's because it was Halloween. So we spent two days celebrating with uh, my daughter and then <laughs> We all got very, very sick. Um, my COVID tests all came back negative. Uh, my husband's not so much. So we have been at home since then and we've both been miserable. And my little girl has also been very ill. Um, she's not got the cough or anything. She's just had a little bit of a fever here and there. Um, so I didn't get nearly as much done as I would have liked to have gotten done, but oh well. Um, so, for the week so far, I have actually DNF'd two things. Um, I ended up DNFing the Terraformers by Annalie Newitz. This one, the concept and the ideas, I loved the ideas. They, it was very, very cool. It was the whole premise of it was a new planet. It was terraformed and it's cultivated by this corporation. Um, and they were going to use it to sell to buyers as a place to live or for you know human habitation and evidently they've been doing this for centuries the humans on the the beings on the planet are created by the company to work for the company and they have worked on this planet for like i said centuries so the main character of the novel is supposed to be uh at a guess 300 years old she's 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 hundreds of years old and she has lived and worked on this planet her whole life um, there are sentient flying moose, cats, mega mole rats. They're all employees or were employees of this company terraforming this planet. And that that's their whole thing. They're environmental rangers and they have this whole credo that they go by. It was just a great idea. But the conflict of the story comes in that they find out that pe some people aren't looking out for their best interests in the way they should be. Um, then there's the idea of personhood and worthhood because they are created by this company. They are owned by this company. And then we get a lot of, you know, interpersonal conflict. I got about 30% through the book and it read, the characters rather, the characters read like a piece of cardboard. <laughs> I got more personality off of a jar of baby food. <laughs> So, the main character is supposed to be so old, supposed to be, you know, dedicated to her job. The only thing we got is that dedication. I didn't get the age. There was no introspection. That The character had no real in-depth thoughts. It was, oh, this happened. Oh, they spoke. Oh, we should probably teach, teach or treat those people better. Okay. Very bland. Very not good. So it was, I was frustrated. <laughs> there are cats running amok over there. Okay, I think they stopped. But so I, I quickly got frustrated with this. And unfortunately that I just, it's not going to be for me. Um, I also DNF'd Killers of, a, I think it's Killers of a Certain Age by Deanna Claiborne. Claiborne? Rayborn. I'll put it up on the screen. Um, this one was just fine. Um, I was really into the first half of this and I DNF this at about 60% and I liked the idea. I liked the, the, the whole project. It took almost the idea of like the retired badass spy uh, being forced out of retirement, being framed uh, and fight for their lives sort of thing. They It took that idea and it ran with it, but it just... a little bit like eating tapioca pudding. <laughs> I would read it before bed at night and normally when I read stuff before bed at night it's usually pretty quick and easy and this was just it felt like it was taking forever. It wasn't but it just it didn't really feel like we were getting anywhere and the few times we did have action sequences where like she needed to kill somebody or she needed to save somebody it was just like it didn't really I didn't feel any impact today. It was just it was just fine. So this was just not a not a win for me so I again I'll let that one go. Um the rest of the weekend was Monster Mash, and I did a vlog project just to try vlogging. Um, I don't know if I'll do it again anytime soon or how I thought about it. I don't know that I loved it. Um, 
we'll see. There may be more vlogs. There may not be. I read Trick by Shay Sanders. Uh, I did not like this one. Um, I'm not going to wrap up why. Um, and I ended up giving it like a two stars or something. And then I also read The Hellmouth Guardian's Lover. Uh, this one, I, I normally like this author, but I didn't like this book, unfortunately. I think it, it did a few things that just are pet peeves. And my, one of the my biggest pet peeves um, was in this book. And so it just, it was maybe a three star. Great idea. The first half maybe was really good. But the last half when things kind of kicked off, I was just not great. Um, then I also read for uh, Monster Mash, uh, Five Seconds Before a Witch Falls in Love. This I really did like. Um, this was the highlight, I think, of Monster Mash. And I know, I, or Weekend of Ween, I know I'm forgetting <laughs> a book. If I will, if I, if I am, I will post it on the screen right now. But Five Seconds Before a Witch Falls in Love was a very cute manga compilation of... Yuri love stories, very sweet, um, nothing spicy. So if you don't want spicy, this is not where you're gonna go. These are just short romance stories. Uh, two of them are connected and one in the middle is its own freestanding story. Uh, I would highly recommend this. If you enjoy Yuri or romance manga, it's just very cute, bite-sized love stories. Um, really liked it. Um, then, let's see. The sickness struck the family at the end of Weekend of Ween Monster Mash. So we, <laughs> I did not get anything else done really. The only other book that I got done was the book I read yesterday when we have, we have finally started to feel better this week, uh, this week, so Monday and today. Uh, that's Asadora, Asadora by uh, Naoki Urasawa. This is, uh, I believe the same author who wrote Monster, which I know is very popular right now online. Uh, but this is the story of Asa, and she is, I believe she becomes known as the girl who survives disasters. Um, and we meet her when she is a little, little, little girl, and she is running to get the doctor for her mother, who is giving birth to her, I think this will be her 12th sibling. Uh, no one pays attention to her, no one knows her name, because she is one of 12. <laughs> And at the same time, a tsunami uh, is sweeping into the coast of Japan. And this takes place right after World War II. Um, and we see in this book, it focuses on the characters and their history and how World War II has impacted them. And it reads like a, almost like a contemporary, just a historical manga. And then at the end, there is a shot of fantastical. Um, it is not going to be a straight contemporary, or I keep saying contemporary, it's not going to be straight historical. Um, I think it's going to be a, a historical manga with fantastical elements. Um, and I, I really don't want to spoil what the fantastical element is. Something that came from Japan, it's very popular in pop culture, and it is, uh, yeah. It's very good. I don't want to spoil it. <laughs> But I love this. I put the next two volumes on hold from the library. That's where I got this one. And hopefully it's going to continue. I think it is just truly going to be a story about these characters. But at the same time you have this otherworldly element there in the background that they're just dealing with. And I love that idea. I love that sort of thing. Uh, I think that is the week in review as far as things finished or DNF'd. Um... The only thing, uh, the things I currently have on the go is I'm still reading Gothel. Uh, I had to actually take the physical copy back to the library, but I lucked out and this morning it went on sale on Kindle for like $3. So I was able to get it. Plus we had some Amazon store credit. So it was, I got it basically for free. Um, so I'm about halfway still through Gothel. I hope to finish that soon. I really do. Um, I am also about... 40, I think, 40, 30 or 40% through The Weight of Blood by Tiffany D. Jackson. And oh my god, I can't wait to get back to that. I I love this book so far. I can't wait to finish it. Um, I really hope Jules dies and dies terribly. I know she will. It's a Carrie retelling. Um, but oh, I can't wait. <laughs> I can't wait for that bitch to die. <laughs> um, let's see what else. Uh, the next manga I plan to read is Donuts Under a Crescent Moon. It's the third volume of that for the 30 and 30. I'm going to read that and I think I may pick up the first, uh, right here, first uh, Delicious in Dungeon, um, which I'm also very excited for. Uh, I have kept an eye, I have had an eye on this series for a very long time 
and it just popped up in my um, library systems catalog so I put that on hold specifically for this month so I have the first three volumes of that I'm gonna start that I think soon um, that is it as far as what I've got when I'm going on um, the only books I got this week was um, I got blue box the physical copy of this this is going to be a reread for 30 and 30 I read I have started started reading blue box when it came out uh, started coming out in the Shonen Jump Viz app uh, in in fact, I think the first bookstagram post or one of the first bookstagram posts I made when I separated my personal Instagram from my book account um, was for Blue Box when it started coming out. Uh, this is a sports romance manga um, about a girl who plays basketball and a boy who plays, uh, I think it's just racquetball. Um, it's super cute. I really enjoy it, uh, so I'm very excited to revisit it. And I added a few things to my TBR. Um, one is mainly, and I am sorry, there is a cat with the zoomies, like, right here. Yes, I'm talking about you. And my birds have been going crazy. They finally shut up, but I'm sure they'll start again. Uh, the Folding Knife by K.J. Parker. Um, thanks to Petrix Under Hype Fantasy video. I have that on my TBR. That one looks interesting. If anybody's read that, let me know. Um, the Hidden City by Michelle West. I have read Michelle West before, years and years and years and years ago. Like probably 10 years ago, 15 years ago. <laughs> but um, I heard about that one on Reddit. I think that's supposed to be a good epic fantasy with little to no romance. I'll report back. And the other one that I have added recently to the TBR is Fresh Banana Leaves by Jessica Hernandez. And I think that is a nonfiction book following the idea of environmental recuperation and protection following ind indigenous methods. So we'll see. Hopefully I'll be able to get to those soonish. Um, but that is it for like the weekly wrap up, week in review. I don't know exactly what I'm going to call this. I'm going to try and do these every Wednesday or Thursday, uh, cause those tend to be days that I am consistently working from home right now, even though today has been an absolute nightmare. Um, <laughs> mm -mm. um, but that is, that is it. If anybody has read any of these or has thoughts, wants to read them or, uh, has anything they'd like to recommend for me, anything like that, let me know. Like, comment, subscribe, all that good stuff, and I'll talk to you guys again soon. Bye! <music>